Hey, what's up YouTube? Scam Model Assassin here, and today I'm going to answer the question, does the internet really need another BF-109 model? Spoiler alert, the answer is yes. I picked up the G6 model kit from Edward, as well as a bunch of extra brass and resin pieces that made for some really good add-ons. The kit was really detailed in the base case, and I love how Edward prints all the rivets on the uh, body and the wings of the plane. You may have already seen it, but I've got a separate video for the resin cockpit, so I'm only going to spend a couple of minutes on it at the beginning here. However, if you want to see a more detailed version of the cockpit build, check the description below and I'll add a link to that video. In order to fit the aftermarket cockpit inside the fuselage halves, it takes a good bit of sanding on the fuselage molding and details. You'll want to sand up until the point where it's about translucent. Uh, obviously you don't want to poke a hole in it, but you should be able to see light through it. If you can't, then it's too thick and you're going to have trouble closing up the fuselage. Here I just cut away and scrape away the mold line on the wheels. I'll sand it down, kind of polish it with some real high grit, 3000, 4000 sandpaper. Then I'll use a razor saw to rescribe the uh, treads. This is just a comparison of the aftermarket versus the kit exhausts. Both of them have a nice opening on the actual exhaust pipe but you can see that the aftermarket has a little bit of more detail. I'm re-punching some of the rivets that were lost when I puttied and sanded the center line on the fuselage here. I'll line the teeth up with some of the rivets that were left over. That way I can get some even spacing and continue the path in a straight line. On this particular plane, don't forget when you're sanding and scribing that there actually is a panel line that runs down the back side top center of the fuselage. I decided to place the ailerons in an up and down position, and so that's actually pretty easy if you just cut off the guide pegs that were molded onto each one. I tend to do a lot more pre-shading as opposed to post-shading, because I'm incapable of drawing a straight line with my airbrush. The pre-shading gives you a lot of time to correct and cover up all the crooked aspects of every single line.
for the modeling, I'm using a 0.2 millimeter nozzle, spraying at around 15 PSI. It's a little bit lower than what I usually spray at. I'm using Vallejo Model Air, and I've got it thinned a little bit more than I normally would. Uh, I believe I used water. I always spray a little bit off to the side and do some test patches on a piece of paper. That way I can fine tune the air pressure and the thinner paint ratio. It's always just a little different. Even when I'm using the same paint, uh, if I come and do it on a different day, it's never quite the same. So always best to warm up a little bit. If it doesn't look good on a piece of paper or some scrap plastic, then it's not going to magically start looking better when you put it on the model. If I skipped this step and didn't spray the coat of white before the blue, the blue's not going to come out and look as vibrant. This pretty much goes for any light color that you're spraying on a dark surface. This is the same chipping technique that I used on the cockpit and the wing root. Sprayed a base coat of aluminum. This particular aluminum from AK, I did not seal in with any sort of clear coat. Then I sprayed on the chipping fluid, then my main paint color. And as soon as that was dry to the touch, about 20 or 30 minutes later, I started chipping it with some water and a toothpick or as some people call it, a cocktail stick. The wet transfer decals go on just like every other decal. You get them wet, you position them, punch them in, let them dry, cover them with Microsol. But then the difference is they've got a clear film that you can peel up afterwards so there is almost no chance of the silvering of the decal film. So I love these things. Unfortunately, I was a little eager. I don't think I let it dry long enough. When I pulled it up, a little bit of the decal came with it. I'll paint over it with a little bit of rubber black color and you won't even notice it at the end after I put a wash over it. Thank you. 
As long as you don't let your oil wash dry for a month, you should be able to just wipe it away with a dry paper towel. I counted every rivet and I noticed I missed a few, just kidding. The decals sank into most of the rivets, but after I put a wash on, I noticed that there was a few that I just needed to go in and punch out. The Obtilung Industrial Earth oil paint seemed to work pretty well on some of the panel lines as a little bit of extra shading primarily because it's got a greenish yellowy tint and since most of this airplane is green it provided some nice contrast adds a little bit of extra dirt and some shading effects I like to do my exhaust stains with oil paints because it's easily correctable. If you overdo it, you just wipe it away. So I'll typically use black and then sometimes supplement that with some burnt umber. I glued one of the spare canopies on with PVA glue at the beginning. That way you can just rip it off and then scrape away the excess glue. It's strong enough to hold, but not too strong. Not like super glue. I would have done this step a long time ago, like before I painted the model, if I would have realized that the lights on the wings were going to look like garbage. So I cut them out, put a little drop of Tamiya clear red and clear green on each side, and then put a little clear epoxy on it for a much better looking light. For such a good looking kit, I'm surprised that they didn't at least give you a couple clear parts that you could have glued on there. Yet another step that should have been done before I painted, but I drilled out a hole on the tail because I needed somewhere to attach the rigging. Extra thin, quick drying super glue here is a must unless you want to be sitting here for 30 minutes holding it in place. Finally, I added some insulators along the rigging by globbing little blobs of PVA glue. If you mess it up, you can just kind of rub it away and start over.
You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go. Ferris Bueller, anyone? Anyways, thanks for sticking around. Have a great day. I'll see you on the next build.